Today's podcast is called How to Choose a Radiology Fellowship. It's another chapter from my RADS resident book, and I thought it might be useful for you to have it in audio form. Maybe you want to listen to it in the car. But it's a very important decision. For some people, they may have known what they wanted to do since the beginning of time. They may have wanted to be a pediatric radiologist or interventional radiologist since the very beginning. But for most people, it's a more challenging decision. And it can't be really taken lightly. And the reason why is because it has a direct effect upon type of practice, lifestyle, location, and the types of people that you'll see on a daily basis, and other things as well. So this podcast basically talks about some of the guidelines you should use to make this agonizing choice. Specifically, I am going to divide it into personality issues, lifestyle issues, the desire to make a little bit more money, the need to be in a certain location, application competitiveness, and gamesmanship slash trends in the different subspecialties. We will go through each of those factors individually. So let's start with the first factor, which would be personality. You can't deny who you are and what you like to do. If you hate working with your hands, you're not going to like interventional radiology. And if you don't like dealing with people, you may not like mammography or pediatric radiology. So you need to take your personality into consideration. When you do take that into account, you've already significantly limited the playing field. In the written portion of the post, I've put some personality clusters and correlated the clusters with the different types of radiology fellowships that would match those clusters. I would recommend you to refer to this list. Not all the clusters are present and your personality may differ from the ones I've listed. So you need to think about that and relate that to those specialties that have similar clusters that match your personality. The next item of interest to think about is lifestyle. Once you've decided upon your personality type and the cluster, you need to really think about what you want to do with your life. Do you want to be an academic guy? Do you want to be non-academic? Do you want to be the person that has in-depth knowledge of your subspecialty? Do you want to be on call at nighttime? Would you rather be in a small or a large practice? So those are some of the things that you need to think about. In the post, I have listed some of those lifestyle factors that go along with each of the different types of subspecialties. Add those factors to the personality factors in order to hone your choice or subspecialty further. If any of those subspecialties that you're interested in are not listed, you really need to think about those types of lifestyle factors that would be present in the subspecialty. Next, let's talk about money. One of the things I'd like to say about the world of earning in radiology is that earning is fairly similar among the different subspecialties across the board. There may be a slightly higher earnings potential for interventional radiologists, but that also goes along with extra call duties as well. Therefore, money, I think, should play a very small role in the decision tree since the similarities are so strong. What about location? Well, location can become a very important factor in choosing a specific subspecialty. Some subspecialties may be limited to more academic centers or large cities. Take that into consideration if you need to be in a more rural locale. For instance, I can tell you that some of the subspecialties like cardiothoracic imaging, informatics, interventional neuroradiology, nuclear medicine, pediatric radiology, and trauma or ER radiology tend to be more large city oriented. That being said, there are some places within rural communities that may have those subspecialties, but your choices may be a bit limited. So you really need to think of that if you are somewhat restricted by location. The next subject that will affect what you want to do is application competitiveness. Competitive subspecialties cycle frequently. I I remember when I first was applying for fellowships way back when, in 2002, you couldn't pay someone enough to go into interventional radiology. In fact, there were so many spots available that anyone would offer anyone a position. Flash forward to today in 2017, and interventional radiology has become a very competitive subspecialty, very difficult to get a slot in one of those programs. So the bottom line is that these subspecialties are very cyclical in how competitive they are. How might that affect you? Well, if you come from a smaller program with a quote-unquote lesser name, or if you have had some difficulties during your time in residency, you may have more of a difficult time getting into one of these more competitive areas. Do not despair if you really dream of doing this specific more 
competitive subspecialty. Most of the time you can get in if you apply to more programs or try to use some of your connections you've made from your residency program. At the current time, as I mentioned before, some of the more competitive subspecialties would be MSK imaging as well as interventional radiology. Again, that may change from any year and you should still try to get into whatever subspecialty interests you. Okay, so we've been through the first five deciding factors, which I think are important for making the main decision of fellowship. There's one more factor, though, that I would like to mention that I think actually is very important, but is not really talked about on most posts, blogs, and other places you may look. This one is really trends and counter trends. Perhaps you're thinking between two different subspecialties that have really similar attraction to you. We'll give an example. Maybe you like MRI a lot or you want to go into more generalized body imaging. Which one should you choose? Using the trend, counter trend thought process, you may be better off picking an area with what they call secular growth. That means constant growth over time. In this situation, an area like MRI would be a secular area because there's constantly new innovations coming out for MRI, new sequences, new things. Body imaging in general, tends to be a little bit less secular and may vary more with the economic cycle. Another thought would be going with counter trends. If you think of the different subspecialties like a stock market, most of the time what happens is the investors that do well are the contrarian investors. In the field of radiology in general, the example would be back in 1996, when Bill Clinton was talking about socialization of healthcare and healthcare capitation, radiology became extremely unpopular. Those same residents that applied during those years because they really liked the specialty of radiology when it was very unpopular. Now, when they graduated years later in the early 2000s, these folks had the most desirable locations and opportunities to work for radiology practices ever in the history of radiology. These folks had unbelievable opportunities, high pay, good location choices, and the ability to practice in their own subspecialty of choice. On the other hand, when radiology was extremely popular back in the mid-2000s, soon after this radiology job bonanza, many of those folks who graduated in the late 2000s or between the years of 2009 and 2012 were very limited in their job prospects, even though they came from the most competitive time when they applied. This same situation will likely hold true for many of the less popular subspecialties at the current time. You may want to take the contrarian view under consideration when you're applying for fellowship. So just to summarize, using these six different criteria, including personality, lifestyle, money, location, competitiveness of application, and trends or counter trends, you should certainly be able to narrow down your choice of subspecialties to one or two different possibilities at the most. I wish you good luck with your final choice and hope to hear back from you at radsresident.com. I would love to hear your feedback regarding this podcast as well as the post. Take care. Speak to you soon.